Hey guys, welcome back or welcome if you're new here. Today I'm gonna to share with you two easy dinner recipes. One is a crock pot soup that's perfect for a cold day. And the second is a low carb cheesesteak option with some onion rings. In addition, I made some cookies and these are gonna be in the video too. So let's get started. Josie's here with me today, say hello or not. <laughs> Tonight for dinner, we're gonna make a low carb crock pot chicken tortilla soup, which I'm excited about. And I plan to make today anyway, but if you look outside behind me, it's snowing and it's really snowing today. It's really cold and snowy. And frankly, nothing sounds better to me than a warm bowl of soup. So that's what we're gonna make for dinner. Just look at that, it's beautiful. But I'm glad I'm indoors today. I'm glad I don't have anywhere that I have to go because it's really coming down. So here's everything that we'll need for our chicken tortilla soup. So we're gonna start with about two pounds of chicken. I think the recipe called for chicken thighs. I have chicken breasts on hand, so that's what I'm gonna use. A little bit of cornstarch, some heavy cream, chicken broth. It calls for adobo seasoning, but I don't have that. So I found this Mexican seasoning blend. I'm just gonna use that. Salsa, Colby Jack cheese, a little bit of butter, and we're gonna make some tortilla strips for the top with some low carb tortillas. I'll begin by adding my chicken, heavy cream, and salsa into the crock pot. Now I've never actually seen a recipe where you cook um, in the crock pot with heavy cream for a long period of time, so I was worried that this was going to curdle, but as long as you cook it on low and you stop it as soon as the chicken is cooked through, I found that it was, it was okay. Oh yeah, I also added in my Mexican seasoning, but I cooked this on low for about three hours or until my chicken was done, and then I went ahead and shredded all of that up. Once that mixture was all shredded, I added in my chicken broth, which I mixed in just a little bit of cornstarch to help thicken the soup. So I'm gonna pour that in, and then I'm going to add about half of my cheese in as well. Stir that to combine, and then I will cook this just until that cheese is melted. Meanwhile, I'm gonna make some tortilla strips for the top of my soup. So I just took two low carb tortillas and I used my pizza cutter to slice these into pretty thin strips. I melted two tablespoons of butter and then you just want to coat each of the strips in the butter and then I put them on a baking sheet um, with a rack on it just so that they would get crisp on both sides. And then I put these in the oven at 350 for about 10 minutes or until they were brown. Then my soup was done. You could see that the cornstarch really did thicken it up a bit. It was so good. So we served this up. We just put some of those tortilla strips on the top, a little bit of extra cheese. I also put some cilantro on there as well. This was perfect for a day like today where it was snowy out. This was warm and comforting and we will definitely be making this one again. So here's everything that we're gonna need for the cheese steaks. We've got just shy of two pounds of sirloin steak, an onion, salt and pepper, some minced garlic, Worcestershire sauce, oil, and buns. I don't have any ho hoagie buns, and honestly, we're gonna eat some keto rolls, so these are some low-carb buns. Just took them out of the freezer, and then once we prep our sandwiches, I'm also gonna put some mayo and some provolone cheese, which you can't see, there it is. And then for our onion rings, we're also gonna need salt and pepper, almond flour, onions, obviously, some paprika, baking powder, Parmesan cheese, a little bit of heavy whipping cream, and two beaten eggs. So what I'm gonna do first is go ahead and I'm going to turn my oven on to 400 degrees, get my onion rings going, and also I did forget to mention, um, I put the beef in the freezer for about 15, 20 minutes. I'm gonna start that as well, start prepping it. You just wanna slice it nice and thin. Thank you. 
I'll need onions for both, obviously, the onion rings and also the cheese steaks. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by slicing up my onions that I will use for the cheese steaks. So I'm just gonna slice those pretty thin and then I'm also going to have to slice some into rings for the onion rings. I had to think uh, for a few minutes here before I cut into these to so think of just how I was going to cut them for each of the different recipes. Now we'll start dredging the onion rings. So these are keto onion rings because I'm using almond flour. So if you follow a low carb lifestyle, these will fit in perfectly. So we're gonna combine the dry ingredients into one bowl, and then I'll combine the eggs and my whipping cream into another. And then you'll just dredge the onion rings. First you'll put the onion in the eggs and then um, into the flour mixture and onto a baking dish. I did try to double coat a few of them and found that that wasn't really working. So instead of doing a double coat, I just did one single coat of each. When you're making something like this, do you do wet hand, dry hand? I tried really hard to just use one hand for the egg mixture and one for the dry, but I forget and then I keep dipping my fingers into the wrong mixture. So I ended up coated in the batter by the time I was all done. Once these were on the baking dish, I sprayed it with a little bit of cooking spray and I put this in the oven at 400 for 10 minutes, flipped the rings and cooked for another 10 minutes. While the onion rings were baking, I began on the cheese steaks. So I put a little bit of oil into my cast iron skillet, heated that up and then I added the onions. I cooked these for about 10 minutes or so, just till the onions were nice and softened and translucent. And then towards the end, I added in my garlic just to give these a little extra flavor. I removed the onions from the pan and then it was time to cook the steak. So in the same skillet, I just added my steak, put that in, and then you wanna cook this until it's almost cooked through. I will add in some salt and some pepper and also my Worcestershire sauce. Cook it till it's almost done and then add back in the onions and garlic. Then just stir that to combine and then these are ready to serve. At this point, my onion rings were done, so I pulled them out of the oven and they too were ready to serve. I assembled the sandwich next, so I just put a little bit of meat and onion mixture onto one of the buns, topped that with some provolone cheese, and I put a little bit of butter too on the top of the buns, just so that would have some extra flavor on it. Now, I like mayonnaise on my cheesesteak. Derek is a purist. He only likes the steak, onions, and cheese. Nothing else, which I don't understand, but whatever makes him happy. So I did um, put these into the oven. I broiled these for a few minutes, just as they were like this, just until that cheese got nice and golden brown on top. And then I did put some mayonnaise on mine, and I left it off of his. We served this up with the onion rings and this made such a tasty dinner. We were craving cheesesteaks, but again, because we're trying to watch our carbs, we didn't go get them from a restaurant. We made them ourselves and this one's a little labor intensive. Making the onion rings took a little while, but this was so good. And just watching this again is making my mouth water. Tonight I'm gonna to try to make some pinwheel sugar cookies. I saw these on Pinterest, they look really cute. I'm not sure how good they're gonna turn out, but we're gonna try. So anywho, we're just gonna need some sugar cookie dough, some red gel food coloring, and some sprinkles. 
I put one tube of the sugar cookie dough into my stand mixer. It started to blend that together so I could add in my red food coloring to it and then I realized I had the wrong attachment. So I had to scrape all the dough from that attachment and use the correct one. Once I got that in, I added, the more, added more food coloring until I got it to the red color that I wanted. I scared my husband because I told him my fingers were bleeding. Really, it was just red food coloring. And then he got mad at me because I lied, apparently. But anyway, I put the red dough uh, between two pieces of parchment paper and I wanted this to be about a quarter of an inch thick. So I took my rolling pin and just smoothed that out until I got it to the thickness I desired. Then I did the same thing with the non-dyed cookie dough, got that to the same thinness. I tried to get it around the same size as the red dough, which obviously is pretty challenging. But after I got that done, I just combined the two and you'll see that I rolled these up to get that pinwheel effect and then put this in the refrigerator for an hour or so for it to cool in order to be able to slice it. I was hoping that these would make some nice round cookies, but the dough flattened a little bit in the refrigerator, so they were more square-like, but that's okay. So after I cut each one, I cut them in about half inch slices. I dipped all sides in my sprinkles and put those on a cookie sheet. The recipe said to place them at least an inch apart. You can see most of them are more than an inch apart, but wait till you see what they look like when they are done baking. So I baked these at 350 for 12 minutes and you can see when I took them out that they all kind of ran together, but it's okay. They actually came apart pretty easily um, when I used a spatula on them, so they were fine. But I was pretty surprised when I opened the oven and look, they were all like one big cake. Well, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if so, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. Thanks for watching and I hope you all have a great holiday season.